Hey everyone, thanks for coming to this session about open source technology and food computers. But I want to give a quick brief background about what food computers are, what open source technology is, and how I've been using it in the classroom. A food computer is an automated uh, computer controlled yeah. garden, basically. And so we build these in my classes. It's basically like a three foot by three foot by three foot box. Um, and inside we have 10 plants. So we usually grow like lettuce or herbs or something like that. We control the light system and the temperature inside um, and the water that goes into the system to basically mimic an outdoor environment inside. So um, we're going to be talking about food computers today, which is an open source technology. Um, and Raspberry Pi, if there's a few of you who are not familiar with it, it's a really cool open source tool. It's kind of like an open face sandwich. So if you think of like a regular computer desktop, um, it's a closed sandwich. It has bread around it. You can't really see what's inside of it. But this open face sandwich Raspberry Pi is really cool because you can add different functions and kind of iterate it and make it into a new product um, and have a different function than just a regular computer. So I think this is a really awesome tool to get kids not only interested in technology in the classroom, but to help them continue their learning afterwards and to, if they have interest in it, kind of develop their skills in technology and have that like natural, um, genuine interest in what they're doing. I know that a lot of my students will talk about how they don't necessarily see the connection between what they're doing in their classrooms and what they'll need to do as adults afterwards. A super important thing that we need to focus on as educators is making sure that students know what the technology out there is, how to interact with it, and how to use it in real life, and how they can in interact with it as they continue to grow as adults, as like lifelong learners and stuff like that. So what I do in my classes, we talk about technology, we talk about Raspberry Pis and how it can improve their own lives, what they want to automate. So my kids will say stuff like, make a Nintendo player or make like an automated pet feeder for their cat. Uh, but then we can kind of like use that and take it a step further. So we take a Raspberry Pi, we make a food computer. So this is kind of what it looks like. We have Raspberry Pi set up connected to temperature sensor, to fans, uh, to a water pump. Uh, and to lights to basically mimic an outdoor environment inside or wherever we have this food computer. Um, so kids build this whole thing all by themselves and then we grow plants with it. And so then we can talk about, okay, this is cool for technology and this is cool what we can do in the classroom, but how does this relate to real life and how can we bring this technology outside of the classroom and continue to think about this after our class or after the school year. And so what we do is kind of think about um, what, how this will affect our community. So I'm from Baltimore City. In Baltimore City, we have a lot of food desert challenges. Um, so it's really interesting to talk to my kids about how do we use food computers and open source technology in general, and how can we help our communities to give access to healthy food to make sure that people can kind of interact with that and understand what the technology um, can do for them. So what I want to do with us today is kind of make a miniature food computer with everyone. So there are bags everywhere. Everyone can take one. Open source technology means that there's no proprietary information. So there's no patents on it. It's open source, so anyone can kind of contribute to the technology and anyone can have the technology. So that means that when we have Raspberry Pi, uh, someone's developed this kind of board that you can use as a computer, um, but also people can kind of tinker around with it. All the instructions for how it's made is online, so anyone can essentially make uh, a Raspberry Pi by themselves. Uh, we use this code called Python programming to write essentially the directions with the Raspberry Pi to talk to all the stuff that we're doing. And so that's open source, so it's not, you don't have to pay for the software, you download it for free. There are a ton of places online where um, all this open source stuff is stored, so sometimes people can just publish their own website and publish it to one of these sites. So anyone can go on, anyone can use the software, and anyone can contribute to that to kind of like make the whole system better for everyone to use. Well, the demonstration of the um, food computer was amazing. We have heard so many things, and I feel like I've listened to so many lectures in the last few days. To put my hands on it, finally, it was like the light bulb went off. It was awe-inspiring. There was a lot of OMGs at my uh, table both with regards to like, it's fun for educators to get to also do hands-on education as well, um, but also to see the implications of something that we could use with our students. I think it's really important to expose them to making uh, and how to create prototypes that could solve real problems. And I think they could use the Raspberry Pi in a number of ways now that Melanie has kind of introduced me to it. While we do mainly work with pre-K through fifth, we've been trying to figure out how do we use the Raspberry Pi? How do we get it into the hands of the early learners and how do we scale it down and scale it back to be appropriate for them? This project might be the jumping off point that our staff figures out, oh, this is where we use Raspberry Pi in pre-K through fifth. 
Food computers and open source technology are super important, especially in education. We know that technology is rapidly advancing. We know that kids need to understand what technology is. And so, especially at South by Southwest EDU, we've seen a lot of people showing how to do a lot of hands-on projects for kids to understand what do circuits mean, what does computer science mean, and the sources for the teachers to kind of like get engaged with that. Um, but what I don't see as much, and what I think this program adds a lot to, is helping the kids understand how to take this technology and apply it to their real lives.